Elon oh, Musk lo oh. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Is Elon Musk locked in a space race with Boeing? Or is space a big enough place for the two of them? Find out more on today's Musk Flash! That one actually felt pretty good. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah. It's no secret that Elon Musk wants to get humans off this dumb Earth and spread across the much cooler stars. That's what we want. And an obvious part of SpaceX's plan is developing manned spacecraft, notably their Dragon 2 spacecraft. And it seems like that goal is getting closer to fruition, but not just for SpaceX. Boeing is hot on Musk's heels with the development of their Starliner spacecraft. What? Both are on track for their first manned missions that can also have women in them by mid-2018. Man or wombed man. No, they're peopled missions. They're, cr they're crude. The, the, the proper parlance now is crude. It's not just man. I don't we, think we need to like, resort to we like suck. nasty language. I think they're like pretty advanced missions, not crude. Nailed it. Now it hasn't been an easy road. After all, they're going to space. SpaceX and Boeing have experienced delays due to the complexity of the project. And Musk has said, <clears throat> As soon as the people enter the picture, it's really a giant step up in making sure things go right. The oversight from NASA is much tougher. SpaceX is shooting for an uncrewed test of the Dragon 2 in February 2018 with a crewed flight in June of 2018. Now by comparison, Boeing is planning their uncrewed test in June of 2018 with the crewed flight following in August, which if you'll notice will make Boeing second, or as we like to call second place, First loser. Both ships will be the first American-made spacecraft to carry American astronauts to orbit since the American shuttle was retired back in 2011. America. Make America space again. And speaking of SpaceX launches, Musk has finally scheduled a test launch for the Falcon Heavy. If it works. Otherwise, it's gonna be a huge a pile embarrassment. of trash. Literally, unviable. Debris. Hope it works. The plan for the Falcon Heavy is to be able to eventually travel to Mars and beyond, Ooh. but Musk doesn't want to get people's expectations too high just yet. Now, it's quite common for rockets to fail during their first few tests, and Musk told the International Space Station Research and Development Conference that there is, quote, a real good chance that the vehicle does not make it to orbit, end quote. Also adding, quote, I hope it makes it far enough away from the pad that it does not cause damage, I would consider even that to be a win, to be honest, end quote. Hey, as it turns out, igniting a whole bunch of chemicals in order to fling a big old piece of metal into space can be pretty hard, and that's understandable. It's more or less just a controlled bomb. Awesome. Rockets are pretty cool. They are pretty cool. And it's story seg time. <laughs> Wait, is that how you segue? Segway. That's how that's spelled? Hey, Kyle, what do you call a book on a gyroscopic scooter? A segue! A story segue! So do you know what is coming a lot sooner than the planned November test launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket, Dan? Please tell me! A solar eclipse! Hey! That's right, on August 21st, a good chunk of the United States will be able to view a total solar eclipse, and NASA has laid down its suggestions for safe viewing so you don't burn your eyes out. Oh, I thought we were all gonna burn our eyes out together and that we just ride off into the sunset that way. How would you know where you're going? Well, the first rule of thumb, unless you're scared, is to never look directly at the sun, don't, ever. Don't. I mean, even if you're wearing sunglasses, for real, because it's gonna hurt, unless you're brave. No, if, no, if you're no. doing something and it hurts, well then, it's bad for you. Well, most of the time, this guy knows what I mean. NASA also recommends double checking the manufacturer and certification number of any viewing lenses you might buy, not using lenses that are damaged, and never using homemade solar filters, because if you do it wrong, again, Anyway, I'd also like to add that maybe you should be careful viewing this eclipse if you have any history of cardiac problems. Why? Why? Because I wouldn't want you to experience a total eclipse of the heart. Boo! And to wash yeah. the taste of that terrible joke out of all of our mouths, NASA has also selected their new mission proposals through their Explorers program. Of course, they all have cool acronyms, so we're gonna read off a couple and, and guess what they mean. Starting off with MEMEX, which sounds like Elon Musk's foray into building the first privately funded dank memeatorium that'll also fly you to Mars, but it really stands for Mechanisms of Energetic Mass Ejection Exploration, which sounds like something you should not look up on Urban Dictionary, if you know what I'm saying. 
And next up is Tracers, which, duh, is from Overwatch. We also have Punch, Cozy, Sunrise, and several more with less humorous names, or as I like to call them, WACRONYMS. It's almost like they wow. named these dumb projects without taking my need to riff on them into consideration. And honestly, if I can't riff on it, cancel that proj. <laughs> And before we go, it's time for your must-see moment of the week. Must-see. We'd be lying if we said we didn't like how sassy our father Elon Musk has been getting on Twitter lately. When The Verge tweeted out that the world's first crewless ship will launch next year, Musk responded with some, um? and a picture of one of the two crewless barges that SpaceX has already used to recover Falcon 9 rockets. And while The Verge meant to say the first crewless cargo ship, it also becomes a classic case of what my mom calls, I don't know what you mean, I only know what you say, Daniel. Is that what she sounds like? Yeah, she has a dumb voice. <laughs> and that's all the time we have for this episode of Must Watch. Bye. Bye. Mom, I'm sorry. Ow. I feel everything. Thank you for watching this week's Musquatch. Remember to like and comment below. Pretty please, with a cherry on top. Make sure to tweet us your best musky stories at SciFile, at Dan Casey, and at Nerdist with the hashtag Musquatch. Oh, wow, wow. It's a muskery do. You.